A short scenic road trip to paradise. We're off to the beautiful town of Cape Charles, Virginia today. The perfect place to rest, relax, and rejuvenate. You're never going to feel like it's crowded in Cape Charles. A place to explore both the past. It's important that people are able to share and see these things for years to come. While you stay and enjoy the present. You can actually walk from the town harbor, do anything that you want to do here. And Cape Charles has plenty of unique shops, so make sure you don't leave without stopping in and buying something for you or someone special. Cape Charles, a place that provides some of the freshest seafood you can savor. There's something about bringing the best product you can bring that outweighs the numbers. You want to play? OK. Anything where uh, your own body is your motor, we're, we're, we're into it. Then it's time to splish, splash the day away. Del Marble Life, on the road to Cape Charles. Buckle up, because here we go. Virginia, a charming town that sits along the Chesapeake Bay. I'm Lisa Bryant. I'm Jimmy Hoppe. And I'm Katie Zarilli. <laughs> hey, guys. There she is. You're pretty amazing coming out of a tire. You know You know, I, mean. I tried. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Great to see you here. Good to see you. Well, this is going to be a great day. I hope you guys got your rest, because okay. we've got a lot to do today. There is plenty to do here, and there is plenty to see. Well, you're going to lead the charge for us, aren't you? That is right. And hey. We're going on an adventure. You guys at home, you guys are invited. Maybe a quick trip, maybe a weekend getaway, or stay a while, right? So we have a ton to cover today, and we're going to start with a few standouts, Okay. all right? So right here, you guys know Virginia is for lovers, and so you can find plenty of love signs, of course, throughout the state. And this one here is all about what Cape Charles is about. So you can see the L is made of sea glass, seashells. The tire, which I really enjoyed popping out of, is for its agriculture. Kayaks for the V, which show off all that you can do. And then crab pots for the E. So this is one of what we're calling our Cape Charm. And there are so many of them that I'm going to go out and find the rest of them. So I got to head into my golf cart. And you guys, I'll, uh, I'll see you later. <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> I got a funny feeling she's going to be putting some miles on that golf cart. I think you're right. And a lot of people do. As a matter of fact, that's how they get around on Cape Charles. Hop in a golf cart, and you're just moments away from wherever you want to be. That's one benefit of visiting a quaint community like this. And bonus, the other drivers on the road really treat those golf carts just like they're another vehicle moving along. So you really feel safe when you're out and about exploring. It is pretty cool. Another thing that you are going to find fascinating is this beach. It is a gem of a beach, and there are many reasons for that. We think this one tops the list. It's the only public beach on Virginia's eastern shore where you don't have to pay to visit or to park. And at the southern end, you have the Cape Charles Fishing Pier, and I think that's where Katie was heading off to. Jimmy and Lisa, check out this Cape Charm, the Fishing Pier. Now, this is the perfect place to do some solid fishing, crabbing, boat watching, people watching, relaxing, reading, whatever it is you enjoy. Oh, and no fishing license? No problem. Cape Charles has its own saltwater fishing license for this pier, so you are all set. All right, I am off to my next Cape Charm. See you in a few. No fishing license required. Now, I can get behind that deal. I, I know you can. <laughs> now, uh, perhaps you're starting to get that feeling. You know, you know the feeling I'm talking about, the one where you just want to get in your car and go. Maybe you want to get here now. Oh, yeah, I know what you're, you're talking about, wanderlust. Uh, well, close. I'm actually talking about wander love, which is fitting ah. for our, our background here. Consider Wander Love an open invitation to visit Cape Charles, whether it's a day trip or a long weekend. And while you're here, you'll be contributing to an effort to help this gem of a town recover in areas hit hard by effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. When that happens, economic stability gets stronger, which in turn allows people 
like you and me to continue to enjoy the treasures you'll find in Cape Charles. Wonder love. Makes Wonder sense, doesn't it? It does make sense. You're absolutely right. And uh, something we want to reassure you of is that when you get here to Cape Charles, safety is no problem. The people here in Cape Charles go to all kinds of length to keep your personal bubble intact. Keep your safety intact. That's the top of their list. Social distancing is no problem. Your personal bubble is perfectly respected. While you take the time to rejuvenate and revive yourself, to relax and hit that reset button, because after all, you deserve it, right? Of course you do. Yeah, so so once the Wonder Loves set in, maybe you'll want to drive somewhere that you, you see on your way to the heart of Cape Charles, and that's where Katie is now. Lisa, showing off this next Cape Charm is an honor. Now, don't let your eyes deceive you. This might look like a lighthouse. Any guesses on what it actually is? Well, if you guessed water tower, then you win bragging rights. But have you ever seen a water tower that looks like this? This was designed in 1992, and the goal was to have it look like the old Cape Charles Lighthouse. It's incredible. You have got to see it for yourself and to think it's a water tower. All right, well, it is back to the golf cart for me. Our next Cape Charm is one for the history books. You'll see. I have to say, when you're driving into Cape Charles and you see that water tower, you're like, is it a lighthouse? Is it a water tower? <laughs> it is a water tower. Very cool. That's and I know incredible. Katie loves her water towers. Now, Katie mentioned history. And yes. speaking of history, Cape Charles is chock full of it. There is a ton of history in Cape Charles, and a lot of it centers around the railroad. As a matter of fact, Cape Charles to this day still serves as the headquarters for the Eastern Shore Railroad. A little bit later on, we're going to learn more about Cape Charles' rich history, how a ferry plays a huge role in that. And if you're a history buff, we're going to give you all the answers you need to win your next trivia contest. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned trivia, because here's trivia for you. What does a giant crater in Cape Charles have in common? Well, short answer is scientists are still studying what they believe happened a long, long time ago. We're talking millions of years. The general consensus is this. A large meteor crashed into the Atlantic near modern-day Cape Charles. As we understand it, that caused a large crater now known as the Cape Charles Impact Crater. And there are so many more stories to explore in Cape Charles. Katie is connecting those dots for us. Guys, time to explore something just as fascinating as that crater. And here we are at our next Cape Charm. And it is the Cape Charles Memorial Library. Now, this hasn't always been right here on Mason Avenue. It actually started inside somebody's home more than 100 years ago. But now you can step inside this former bank building and find a ton of resources, books, newspapers, Wi-Fi, arts and crafts, and there are even movie nights. And by the way, this is dedicated to the local men who gave their all during World War I. All right, time now to take a walk downtown and enjoy the sights and sounds as we head to our next Cape Charm. Ah, here we are, the beautiful Central Park. Isn't this place gorgeous? There's that gazebo, the fields, the fountain. Now this is a place you're going to want to spend time. And the kids, they can play at the playground, which is called Cape Kids. So cute. And you can relax. So I'm going to burn off some energy of my own before wading in the water a little later. Jimmy Lisa, want to join me? She knows how to have fun. Do you think they'll she let does. us play? Oh, I know that I know I could pass for a kid. I'm still trying to grow into my boots, right? <laughs> Anyway, at any rate, it's easy to see why Central Park is the central stage for so many things that happen here in Cape Charles. As a matter of fact, there's the Krabby Blues Festival in the spring. They have live concerts in Central Park from July all the way through Labor Day. Now fast forward just a few more months and it's the sights of the season at the Grand Illumination. Central Park lighting up every December as the town celebrates the holiday season in true Cape Charles fashion. There is, of course, a golf cart parade. What else would you expect? You'll also enjoy live music and the big guy himself, Santa Claus, in a carriage. Oh, that sounds like fun. And I'm going to go out on a limb and to say no other town nearby rings in the new year 
quite like Cape Charles. Forget the ball. They have a crab pot drop on Mason Avenue. And get this, it's not at midnight. The crab pot drop takes place at 10 p.m. on New Year's Eve. And Jenny, any guesses why? 10 p. I have no idea. Well, it might be 10 p.m. here, right. but it is midnight in Greenland. That way, the families in Cape Charles can celebrate New Year's <laughs> early. It's like they thought of everything. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, the fun continues from right here in Cape Charles. Imagine clams and oysters from the boat straight to your home. Cherry Stone Aqua Farms makes that happen. We're going to wade through the water to show you the process that, in the end, is going to please your palate. By the end of this hour, we just know that you're going to be ready to book your stay. We have the perfect place for you to do it, a place packed with everything you need to escape the worries of the world. We're going to check in to the Hotel Cape Charles. No shortage of fun in the water either, whether you want to relax with the waves or tap into a more wild ride. Yep, you'll find it all here. And yep, we're getting our feet wet to bring you along for the ride. Del Marble Live on the road from Cape Charles. Stick around, the adventure continues, and you're going to be able to plan your own. Del Marble Life, we'll be right back. Del Marble Life is brought to you by Tidal Health. Better together, less duplication, more collaboration. The law offices of Tunnel and Razor, Spicer Brothers Construction, Gateway Subaru, and a and A Company. The following segments in today's episode of Del Marva Life are brought to you by Cape Charles Main Street. We're kicking today off with clams and oysters. Our first stop on this grand tour of Cape Charles is Cherry Stone Aqua Farms, an operation that is pumping out fresh, sustainable, and delicious products. Hope you brought your waiters, because we're going out on the water. There's something about bringing the best product you can bring yeah. that outweighs the numbers. It's quality over quantity when it comes to the shellfish at Cherry Stone Aqua Farms. These guys are raising clams and oysters as carefully and cautiously as they would their own children. It's integrated from the start all the way to the finish, mm -hmm. all the way to the finish line of your dinner plate. Mm -hmm. And the pride that goes into that is what keeps our product the best on the market. Farmer Kenneth Bubba Frisbee, just call him Bubba, can prove it. One tour of the operation and out come a few indisputable facts. These guys know exactly what they want. We like them to be a little smaller. Mm -hmm. We like them to be three inches long. Okay. We like them to be flat across the bill. Okay. With a nice deep cup. Okay. With a nice almost teardrop looking shape. And they'll take every necessary step to make that happen. As the seed progresses and gets larger and stronger, uh, they'll be moved from this area to out behind that breakwater out there. If you can picture it, this company farms on 6,000 acres of the Chesapeake Bay. My crew typically handles about 30 million oyster seed a year. And that's great news for these waters, constantly being purified to get back to their pristine condition. An adult oyster can filter up to 50 gallons of water a day. Our bay has never looked so good. Bubba says caring for clams is a bit more hands-off. If you were to envision a clam bed, it, most of them are 14 foot wide mm -hmm. and 50 foot long. Wow. Each one of those beds have approximately 50,000 clams to a bit. Whereas oysters basically need babysitters. They have mm -hmm. to be nurtured, they have to be handled, and that little bit of tough love that we give them sure. is what makes our oysters what they are. It's in that constant caring that these little guys and gals have captured Bubba's heart. The more I think I learn about an oyster, the, the less I actually know. But he knows enough to not get too attached. There are two different kinds of oyster farmers. <laughs> Do you know what they are? Probably the ones who get sad. Ones no? that have killed oysters and one that are going to kill oysters. Bubba never knew this would turn into his career, but he's sure glad it did. I've been blessed to have people, good people behind me that, mm. and that have allowed me to become what I want to become. Yeah. I never set out to be an aqua farmer. Aqua farming found me. 
And these oysters and clams are finding consumers nationwide and will hopefully continue to reach even more. We want to get as big as the oyster will allow us to get. And at the same time, never for one second sacrificing excellence. What we want to do is we want to take what we have today and make it perfect. That attitude at Cherry Stone will never change, which means these shellfish have nothing but success in their future. Love Bubba. I mean, how could you not, right? I'll admit he gave me so much information, I couldn't even fit it all into this piece, but it is all fascinating. Also, hard to believe this operation got started back in 1895. That is some deep roots. Speaking of history, don't go anywhere because coming up next, we are going to the Cape Charles Museum. And there's some good stuff there. Tell my real life, we'll be right back. All right, here's your stop. Thank you, Lisa. There'll be a little something extra in your check. Oh, yeah. OK, <laughs> so you probably already know that there's lots to do as far as unique things and places to go and things to see here in Cape Charles. But you might also be surprised to learn there is a huge historic part to all this. And here's where you find out about that. This is the Cape Charles Museum and Welcome Center. Go inside, and you're going to find stuff that shows off the things of the town from steamers to ferries to the railroads, everything that kept Cape Charles on its toes. As a matter of fact, the Marble Life's Katie Zerilli is going to take us inside. Open the door to the Cape Charles Museum and Welcome Center, and you've instantly gone back in time. The humble brick building houses all kinds of artifacts, starting from the era in which the railroad reigned. It was completed in 1884, and the town was incorporated in 1886. Archivist and board member Laura Smith says the town has William Scott and Alexander Cassette to thank for bringing the railroad here, which in turn brought people here. This was sort of a, a melting pot town. With the opportunity of the railroad, people came from all over. The museum also chronicles the town's history with steamboats and ferries. In fact, visitors can get a good idea of the ships going to and fro. We have models of the steamboats and ferries that were used um, here in Cape Charles. It's also adorned with high school treasures and is equipped with an exhibit preserving the memory of the long lost Sandy Island, once off Cape Charles. Laura's a come here rather than a from here. It's the rich history that drew her in and kept her around. I like to write articles about people like the, you know, not the most uh, famous ones. I like to bring the ones that are sort of in the background to light. Everything that's been brought to light in this museum since the Historical Society got it started has been gifted. The givers believe each item is attached to a story worth hearing. Family members donated this stuff over the years. Uh, because, you know, they feel that it's important that people are able to share and see these things for years to come. In years to come, folks can also expect these rail cars that sit outside the museum to be restored. As more exhibits come and go and the staples remain, people part of Cape Charles past, present and future can trust that its history will always be alive. The Cape Charles Museum keeping track of the wonderful history of this beautiful place since 1996. Now, if you want to find out when you can come visit the Cape Charles Museum, you can find that out on dumbarborlife.com. So, Lisa, we're next. Oh, you're going to love this. I'll give you some hints. Okay. It's, it's his story. It's um, yeah, contemporary, contemporary, but it's also comfy. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. The Hotel Cape Charles, and you're coming too. Let's go. Nice. Lisa, wait, Lisa, Lisa. It's not hard to see that Main Street in Cape Charles is the place to be. This vibrant downtown area has so much to offer. And when you visit, you can stay here. The Hotel Cape Charles is 100 years old, but inside, it's as contemporary as it is comfortable. Here's Delmarva Life's Katie Zarelli. Historic, yet modern, quaint, yet elegant, cozy, yet luxurious. The Hotel Cape Charles dresses up Mason Avenue and dazzles those who step inside. When they walk in the door, they're just very surprised at what they see. 
a delight to David Gamino and his wife, who took it over in 2010 and spent 24 months remodeling. We wanted to create a hospitality option that was, um, you know, upscale, uh, I guess you could almost say metropolitan, uh, something that you might uh, encounter in a, in a city like New York or Washington, D.C. Those who stay sleep on handmade beds, experience high-end bathing, receive grand service while still getting the small town feel. We know lots of our customers now. We know most, lots of our guests. Um, they come back year after year. And if the reasons they keep on coming back aren't obvious, here are a few more. Hotel Cape Charles is pet-friendly, and both you and your pets will love this courtyard out back. The hotel as a whole is a resting point for both folks staying and playing in Cape Charles and those passing through. You know, we're sort of halfway between New England and Florida. Those who do come only briefly are going to wish their visit could be extended a bit. It's a town of the perfect setting, size, and space. Even on the most crowded summer day, you're never going to feel like it's crowded in Cape Charles. David and the missus have lived here since 2002. They love having an opportunity through hospitality to show off their special community. You know, you leave your screen door uh, latched and you are able to drive your golf cart around. And the kids are able to go outside and ride their bikes around. Uh, the beach is fantastic for toddlers and small families because you don't have to worry about the uh, riptide or current or huge waves. So you can actually, uh, you know, you can really relax on the beach. You can also explore the barrier islands, pure and pristine. You see these islands the way they were, you know, really the day that God created them. There's been no development on them. Development on this hotel, however, will continue. David says he dreams of expanding the number of rooms they've got available, which right now is 22. They want to make their cafe perhaps restaurant-like and offer concierge service. So far, they've hosted guests from almost 200 countries, a big deal for a small community. You know, the hotel, um, you know, was a, was a was a really significant uh, investment in this in this in this town, particularly in 2012, sort of coming out of the recession, and um, you know has been a has been a great sort of economic multiplier for the town in terms of the number of people that are able now to visit the town that really weren't able to before. And it's possible just one stay at this lovely landmark in this delightful downtown will have folks coming back for a lifetime. And the views from up here are amazing. Now, if you'd like some more information on pricing, just head over to our website, delmarvalife.com. It is time now for a tour down Mason Ave, which Karen Zamorski says <laughs> is the heart of Cape Charles. And I love that we're doing this in the best way possible in a golf cart, right? You have to. Absolutely have to. It's really, it's a lot of fun. Um, I just want to give you a little bit of the history yeah. and background, though, on Cape Charles. The town was founded by William Scott, who was a railroad tycoon that worked for the New York Penn Railroad. And he was kind of a, a forward thinker, kind of crazy. And he said, you know what? I think we need to run this railroad all the way down the peninsula so that we can then ferry across to Norfolk to carry, you know, goods and, yeah. um, and people. Um, so he couldn't get the railroad to do it with him, so he decided to do it on his own. That was awesome. Yeah. Yep. So basically, as you come into town, yeah. all of the uh, property over here mm -hmm. on this left-hand side mm -hmm. is railroad property. Wow. Um, they still own it, and they, little by little, are tearing out the tracks because mm -hmm. it's going to become a, uh, another uh, way to come into town via bike, walking, mm -hmm. running, etc. So there's cool. a trail that's coming into town along with was once the railroad. Mm -hmm. And we're coming up now on basically the shopping district and kind of the center of the center of town. A lot of shopping activity? A lot of shopping activity. Mm -hmm. There's great restaurants uh, oh, nice. and a lot of unique individual types of, of shops. Mm. But as we come up here on the left hand side, mm -hmm. we're going to see Strawberry, what we call Strawberry Street Plaza. Okay. 
And Strawberry Street Plaza was one of the first projects that our Main Street organization oh, undertook cool. and did the, handled the beautification of it. And since then, it's become kind of the real heart of town, heart and soul of where people like to gather. This is where people will gather for lots of things like events. In the back, you're gonna see one of the original railroad cars uh, from the New York Penn Railroad that was uh, why the town of Cape Charles was founded. And what we're getting ready to start is a fundraising campaign. We're gonna convert that railroad car to um, a center where people can stop, get a little history. Cool. We're gonna add some additional bathrooms here in the center of town to help some of our, our shoppers. <laughs> and it will become kind of another focal point center um, of town That's activity. Awesome. So we're gonna continue on. All of these are located in late 19th century, 20th century buildings, early 20th century buildings. Um, so all of them are unique in their own right. So yeah, the architecture is beautiful. There. It's incredible. And most everyone that has come into these buildings has respected that mm. and has done their renovations in coordination with the historic board here in Cape Charles. So everybody's very aware and really into uh, the historic preservation here. Now, it's incredible in this tiny little town of four square miles, we actually had 27 winners of the Best of Virginia Living. What? Yes, yes, 27 winners here in Cape Charles. Wow. So there isn't a, an activity or shop you don't go to that might not be on that, that's on that list. So here on the left, again, this is where the original um, town of Cape Charles Harbor comes oh, in. Wow. Here is where the t original terminal was for the train, where they stopped, and then the ferry, they boarded there so they could be carried over to Norfolk. Whoa. Yeah, and in World War II, a lot of soldiers mm -hmm. um, came through here, and that's how they got uh, from New York, Pennsylvania, all came to here, and then were transported by ferry over to uh, the naval. That's incredible. Yeah, naval yards over in Norfolk. One of the nice things about the Town Harbor here in Cape Charles is the fact that it's a walkable harbor. Mm. So you can come in by boat, you don't need a car, you don't even need a golf cart. You can actually walk from the Town Harbor and go to restaurants, shopping, do anything that you wanna do here. Oh, wow. We're going to end here at the love sign. Oh, I love it. Yeah, one of 150 in the state of Virginia. And the one last thing I'll show you here at the end is yeah. the little gazebo over here to our right. Mm -hmm. uh, that gazebo was actually constructed in 1911. And it was the center of town then because that's the only place they had entertainment. No way. Yep. The that's center of town was right there. Right there. Everybody gathered there for their entertainment. You know what I love about Cape Charles? It's there's so much history mixed with no contemporary stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. There's, I mean, the people here are all so warm and welcoming. Um, they're respectful of the history, mm -hmm. but yet still have brought a, a modern flair to the food, the shops, everything. All right, Karen, that was an amazing tour. You were a great host. Thank you so much. Oh, well, thank you. I'm so glad you could join us here in Cape Charles. Absolutely. And you all coming back, though, right? <laughs> Definitely. No question. And coming up next, we are trading in the wheels for the water sports. You're gonna love that. Stick with us, we'll be right back. Recognize him? That's King Neptune. You know, one of the coolest things about Cape Charles is when it comes to having fun in the bay, you have so many options. Katie recently visited our friends at Southeast Expeditions, and as you're about to see, whether you're sitting in a kayak or standing on a paddleboard, you're bound to have a blast. Whether you want to paddle sitting down, Watch my style. Or do so standing up. Well, like, are my feet in a good spot? Yeah. Yeah, they're great. Okay, all right. Southeast Expeditions offers you the opportunity to muscle through the Chesapeake Bay one stroke at a time. Anything where uh, your own body is your motor, we're, we're, we're into it. Both calm ways to explore a diverse body of water. Am I going the right way? Oh, perfect. Hard to get lost out here. 
<laughs> well, what's really unique here is we're on the Chesapeake Bay right now, and that's gonna have you know, these, all these tidal creeks, a lot of aquaculture, stuff like that, um, and then just houses tucked into the sort of banks of the forest. But then you travel 10 miles to the east and you're on the seaside. Um, it's actually part of the longest stretch of undeveloped coastline on the entire east coast is Virginia Eastern Shore's seaside. Um, so that's gonna be, you know, all these salt marshes, um, untouched barrier islands, and that's really, really unique paddling. Folks can either rent a kayak or paddleboard and plot their own course, or sign up for guided tours. Those will be a combination of sport and school. We sort of act as naturalists and just sort of, you know, interpret, you know, what's going on out here and just get people out in the water to places they wouldn't normally go to. So that's actually an osprey nest up and to the right. Uh, so those are sort of big seafaring birds that are sort of fishermen that will dive and catch fish with these huge towns they have. No one's home at the moment. No one's home. And then all of the base, you see all these oysters around here. Um, and I talk about oysters on a lot of my tours. They're really good for the water quality. So one oyster can filter feed up to 50 gallons of water a day and just clean it right up. And these ain't your average tours. One leads you to wine by way of water. We claim it as the world's first kayak winery tour. Not sure if that's true or not, but um, basically we start at one of the local boat ramps a bit north of us, um, paddle the Chatham Vineyards, which is really, you know, one of the only wineries out here. They've got um, really good wine. We paddle out there, sample that wine. Um, so sort of, you know, you get to experience the water and get to experience a bit of the land out there. Say cheers. Or perhaps checking out a sunset is more your style. Their tours will take you there, too. We just hang out, watch the sunset, and that to me models most like what me and my friends would do here. Of course, you'll be swept away by the sights and sounds, but what will make it extra special is its intimacy. So here we'll do these trips and not see a single other kayaker or boater for the whole day. Um, and just sort of that small size, like, you know, getting to know the people out there. I don't feel like I'm gonna get too far. You might be surprised to learn that it won't take you too long to get a handle both sitting at water level. Yeah, it's like level six kayaking. I feel like it's level six at least. And standing on top of it. Now we're cooking. As close to walking on water as it gets. It takes no time at all to go from nervous. Just go with the flow. Just go with, oh, yeah. Just go with the flow. To fearless. <laughs> Tricks. I've had maybe one or two people flip this whole summer, and that's been on our uh, kayak winery tour, so don't over imbibe and you'll be fine. Seriously, it's smooth sailing. Your dismount may not win you any gold medals. Okay, we did it. But the memories you'll take home are more than enough. Doesn't that look like fun? Katie said of the two, they were both fun, but she kind of liked the paddle boarding just a bit better. Again, you don't have to have any experience. You can do it at any skill level. OK, so we've already shown you a lot of ways that you can enjoy this wonderful water here at Cape Charles and really relax. But well, we know you have that need for speed, so it's time to fire up the jet skis. And we gave Katie's really the green light to hit to gas. Jump on a jet ski and you're giddy from the get go. <laughs> I figured that would happen. Justin just flew right out. I pushed it pretty far. Start off slow. It'll only take a minute or so to master the machinery. Do I press this green thing? <laughs> and then full throttle and fly. When you take a ride with Poseidon Water Sports, you're let loose and almost limitless. Uh, if you look at most jet ski rentals, they put you in what I call the pen or you know a smaller area. They put these buoys up and they say, stay in that area. Not here. Owner operator Raven Lundy says this spacious bay is open for all kinds of play. We uh, decided we would let them adventure more. We let people roam more freely 
um, as long as they're being respectful of other people, kayakers, paddleboards, and boats. If you're anything like me, once you get a feel for going fast, you think, I'm not stopping for anything. That is, until you catch a glimpse of these charming creatures. <gasps> Dolphins as delightful and dazzling as you can imagine. It's almost like you arrived right on time for the show and you've got the best seat in the house. They're like right there. Oh my gosh! Word of warning, the feeling of freedom, the sweet sights, the wild waters, all of it might just make you want to move. Here's the good news. Poseidon welcomes both the crazy and the calm. So you see everything. You see all walks of life, you know, um, every shape, size, color. Um, we meet, we interact with a lot of people. And your adventure can be both scenic and savage. You get some that, you know, they just want to go out there and ride in a circle and go fast and kill each other, and you're biting your fingernails off. But, you know, the 90% is, you know, we're, um, you know, an amenity on vacation, and we're showing people a good time. A good time that'll have your worries sunk deep in the water. You'll be as fearless as a photographer who flips the camera on himself. Looking good, Justin. Big smiles on the beautiful sea. Don't be scared, just give it a shot. You only live once, you know, so how do you know if you like something you've never tried it? Even after you dock your engine, you might not be finished floating if you catch my drift. We hear it almost every day. Some little kid walks up and goes, that was the best day of my life. And you're like, wow, like that's why we do this. So make sure you pencil in Poseidon when you come to Cape Charles. The water is waiting. Speed up, slow down, make a splash, get soaked, stay smiling. Was that not incredible? Listen, we talked to Katie and Justin. They had never been that close to dolphins before. Can you imagine that experience? Also wanted to let you know, Poseidon Water Sports is the largest jet ski rental location in the entire state of Virginia. Okay, we have given you plenty of reasons to come to Cape Charles. How about we add to that list? Here you go. There's one thing that we can't describe to you. We've got to show it to you, and we're going to do that next. Del Marble Life on the road from Cape Charles. We'll be right back. Oh, this has just been the best day. I'm getting kind of used to driving this golf cart, and I tell you what, that jet ski was a blast. There's just so much to do here. We talked about it earlier, but by now, I think the concept of Wanderlove is crystal clear. You've got to come see it for yourself. It's just a quick trip, and bam, you are here. And I tell you, I hate that this trip is ending, but Jimmy and Lisa have one more reason why you have got to come here. All right, <laughs> here I am. Hey guys, what do you have? Oh, Katie, words don't do it justice. There's nothing we could say that could describe the icing on the cake. Okay, so let's let's just go ahead and do it. All right. All right, you ready? Here we go. Boom, there it is. The most beautiful sunsets are in Cape Charles. You have not seen a sunset, so you've seen a sunset in Cape Charles. It's just an absolute, listen, I gotta tell you, video does not do it justice. You need to come see it for yourself in Cape Charles. And hey, if you've made memories in Cape Charles or if you're planning a visit, let us know. Show us your pictures. Just connect with us on social media. Our handle at Delmarva Life. Thanks for joining us today. And don't forget to join us again tomorrow. Just set your clock for 5 p.m. for another Delmarva Life. And I'm gonna go back the same way I came in. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'll never get tired of that. Yeah, no kidding.